Okay, so today's deck is Mono Red Goblins. Um, this is an aggro deck that has been just popular for about forever uh, here in a historic. And this deck basically revolves around two threats, one being Muxus, the granddaddy of all goblins. Uh, this card's printing has made this deck very powerful. And basically, because he can rip up to six goblins off the top of your library into battle, he is super, super strong and can finish out the game real quick. Um, having a Cranko uh, on the battlefield as well is really strong, and this card is able to produce a huge board for you that can overwhelm most opponents. In terms of getting to those threats, uh, we have Skirk Prospector that turns all your goblins into mana, Wily Goblin that creates treasures on turn 2 that can ramp you, um, Conspicuous Snoop that can both take the abilities of either a Cranko to produce goblins, a Skirk Prospector to function as a Skirk Prospector, um, or the taking the ability of the Hobgoblin Bandit Lord to deal damage directly to your opponent. Um, or, uh, yeah, that's actually all of it. Um, so Conspicuous Snoop is still a pretty good card, uh, even with only three activated abilities to target. Um, then in the three drop slot, we have four copies of Gem Palm Incinerator as a removal spell and a card draw spell wrapped together in one. We're generally cycling this card to remove something, but if we really need a creature in a pinch, it's a three mana two one and that can maybe trade for something. Goblin Matron is here in the deck to search primarily for Muxus, so we have basically eight copies of Muxus. Uh, or it can find a Cranko if we think that that's going to be more of a uh, important thing. Sometimes we will grab a Conspicuous Snoop if the if the ability to just have the activated abilities of any of our creatures is more important than having creatures on board additionally. Uh, and then the last almost linchpin of the deck, surprisingly, is this Goblin Warchief, which discounts all of our spells and gives them haste. Generally, when I play against this Mono Red Goblin deck, I'm removing this card uh, as the number one threat behind um, the number one threat with number two being Conspicuous Snoop. Basically, we're going to go in with our 24 land Goblin deck and just try to put as many goblins on the stack as possible. This is Mono Red Goblins, it's as simple as that. Let's go win some games. <clears throat> so, if I'm playing my Red Black Goblins deck, which you've seen probably in an earlier video on this channel, you'll know that I generally like to keep hands that contain a Muxus because <clears throat> casting that card is very important to this deck. However, because we run with Goblin Matron, I'm actually completely fine not having a Muxus in hand because I can use the Matron to search for it if it is indeed something that we want to do. <clears throat> so this hand has a little bit of ramp, but generally I think we're going to be playing for value here, trying to get a conspicuous snoop online that can have some sort of an interesting ability stapled to it. Uh, we know that our next draw is going to be a Skirk Prospector, so we do not have a third um, drop. And, okay, so this is looking like Devotion, but also Jeskai. Interesting. Definitely some sort of control deck with a big mana finish. I am going to be on, I think, Conspicuous Snoop again. I'm just kind of putting that out there. Uh, now we know that we're drawing a mountain next turn, so I can search Prospector and Wily Goblin. That will put me at 4 mana. Uh, I can also just Wily Goblin off the top, which is far better. This keeps this is essentially giving me card draw, which is good. Uh, here is another Goblin, and now I can swing in with Continuous Snoop. Um, I will not do anything else from this point, but... On my next turn with 4 mana, I think I'm looking at doing Goblin Matron. We'll have 5 mana. I think I can Goblin Matron and then potentially rationalize using an additional treasure and sacking something to Gem Palm Incinerator. Uh, if that does not pan out. So basically I'm looking at the turn after next being a Muxus turn. Um, so I do want to cast Matron soon. 
Heartless acting, my Skirk Prospector is a smart move. Uh, we'll let that go. I don't really need to draw a card for any reason. So that's okay. There is my land for turn. We have another Skirk Prospector to replace it. And now I have Matron for Mr. Muxus. I will indeed search. Here's Muxus into my hand. <clears throat> and now they're going to have to deal with me. I'm one mana short of being able to Muxus this turn. So I will just go ahead and pass it through. This deck has no source of double white, so I don't think we're going to have a board wipe come down this turn. Okay, it's just a Cheville. That is okay. The death touch is going to sting a little bit, but I am okay with that. Skirk Prospector. That's unfortunate. Um... I can try to get, okay, wait. I can kill Cheville and sack my treasure. Um, this isn't the coolest thing ever, but I will uh, definitely remove their creature. I'd have liked to keep that treasure around, but it is what it is. Okay, so I can instead put a Cranko out. This is just giving me an alternate win condition. And I now need one land drop after the next turn to figure out how to kill my opponent. They play a Yorian, and I get a Warchief right off the rip, which is perfect. I can play a Wily Goblin, I suppose. I'll make, I'm trying to decide if I need to do, if I can do um, conspicuous snoop things this turn. That'll actually be more damage, so I'm going to Cranko, and uh, we do have lethal here. Um, this involves a tapping, so I can deal six to my opponent, and now I can swing it. So we were able to do the thing game one through a couple removal spells. Uh, it took us until turn five or six, so... A little bit slow for the goblins deck, but that was pretty good. Let's go on to round two. We've got a tough hand this time. Four lands, but just Wily Goblin and Cranko. This one's a mulligan for me, almost certainly. Only thing worse than this would be just having all my Muxuses or no lands. So I'm much happier with this hand. I think I'll get rid of a Wily Goblin. And then by turn two or three, I'll have Goblin Matron to decide what I'm doing with uh, its search. I'll keep six, bottom Goblin, and we'll see what opponent does. They're on the play, and they're on Mono Red. Uh, I will still lead out on the Skirk Prospector. Um, mainly this version of Goblins is about putting things onto the battlefield right away. And it looks like we're on either Shamans or some sort of Red control or burn okay we're gonna see a couple of burning tree emissaries down on turn two sure and opponent is going to empty out their hand uh robber of the rich is going to start to suck uh we have a lot of things that they can cast and they rip a wily goblin of their own which is almost one of the worst things that can happen to us and now i have wily goblin I have up to three mana available, uh, but I think I would like to just save this up. Uh, I have Skirk Prospector. They will be able to steal something with Robber of the Rich anyway. So I will just hold back. Ah, uh, man, I don't know if I really want to hold back or not. Uh, if Robber attacks this turn, I want to have a Prospector out so I can double block. So I will be okay sacking this treasure to hopefully deter their attack. I'll be taking four from the emissaries for sure. And my next turn looks like Goblin Matron and then try to muck this after that. Ugh, they get another Robber of the Rich, that just really hurts. 
Um, okay, let's see what they take off of the top. One Muxus and a Conspicuous Snoop. Conspicuous Snoop is tough. Uh, I will block there. T still take six, which is just brutal. And now the aggro deck becomes the one staring down death. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to get Hobgoblin, Hobgoblin Bandit Lord out because this thing has big booty and can block. And now I feel a bit better about where I'm sitting. Uh, either Cranko or Goblin Mature next turn. They have the removal spell. Uh, well, it doesn't really need to be fizzled, but it's whatever. Reckless Ring Leader, so we are on 7 power here. I'm not going to block. So the land was on top of my deck. I'm at 5 life. Here is Conspicuous Snoop. Now I have to decide Goblin Matron or Conspicuous Snoop. I'm not really sure what to do. Um, Cranko is not a good option. Conspicuous Snoop could next turn have an option to hit something. If there's a Cranko on top of my deck, Conspicuous Snoop is good. Um, it's a 2-2 at least, so it can trade for something. That's good. I have a Gem Palm Incinerator that I can cast by sacrificing all my creatures, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, here I pass, and then I think I just take 4 damage. Oh, this is a difficult one. They get Gem Palm. I have my land. Unfortunately, it doesn't really do much, so I think I just need to block. If I take 4 and go to 1, it's just, it's a bummer anyway. I die to too many things here. I have to come up with 2 blockers here, which means... Oh no, they have my Wily Goblin. Yeah, they have lethal. And they actually have Conspicuous Snoop to boot. Okay. That is alright. We pretty much lost this game due to Robber of the Rich. Um, and not being able to dump our hand fast enough. There's a Cranko, and we can just go ahead and concede that one. So we are 1-1 one one after 2 games. Let's move on to round 3 and see if we can do another combo. Okay, this hand's got a Muxus in it, and a couple of 2-drops. We also have Goblin Wartrace to get uh, us to Muxus faster. This is probably one of the faster hands that we'll uh, see out of this deck. So I'm snap keeping that. Okay, opponent at least on black and white. I am going to start running out Conspicuous Snoops to get value out of the top of my deck. And generally, my play pattern... Okay, so this is going to be tough. Authority of the Consoles is a pretty hard counter to this uh, deck, unless we get a Muxus on board. So, I know that my next turn is going to be a Mountain. So, the question is, do I build up towards Muxus, or do I just try to get more value out of my Snoops? I think I'm fine with doing the Snoop thing. Playing more 2-2s does negate Authority of the Consoles, kind of. And so this is the life gain deck. Alright. We now have Cranko on top, which means we can Conspicuous Snoop some. Uh, this is going to gain them a lot of life, which is going to make Valkyrie pump their team pretty quickly. I'm not super hyped on that, but we can at least get a War Chief out. And now things might be okay. For sure we just need to go wide here. Uh, this Voice of the Bless is about to get enormous. They have potentially, yeah, okay, Fatal Push or Blood Chief's Thirst, that's okay. Um, I actually should have held control there and then crankoed with Conspicuous Snoop. Um, bummer, kind of missed that. Um, what I'll do instead then is get Cranko out and just start going wide. Um, they're already at 31. Not super huge on this. I will Bandit Lord to pump my things. And then I can just 
start trying to get them off of their uh, 27 plus life. They take 8 from this attack. That does make them a little smaller. Okay. <clears throat> now a Kranko the following turn can kill Voice of the Blessed potentially. Uh, it's going to be close. I take 8 from Voice and I take another 8 next turn. Um, <clears throat> 4 mana here. 1 Wily Goblin guarantees the Muxus next turn. But a Cranko gets Hobgoblin working. Uh, okay. <clears throat> I'll play Cranko. And I will not be able to do anything until next turn. Okay. Um, my damage just gets eaten here, and I'm just dead to flying damage, unfortunately. Um, so this means that I need to go in, lose three creatures probably, which will still allow me to deal eight to them, bringing them down to 20. Uh, does shrink their creatures and will kill Ilus Ilkor. And then I will be having four creatures left with Cranko. Might be able to take out Righteous Valkyrie. So I think this is an attack that I have no choice but to make. Um, I need to hope that they don't kill Bandit Lord. They do. So now my removal is gone. And I'm going to need to get lucky with a Muxus or something. Uh, Muxus is going to need to hit... A, B a Bandit Lord is really just how I survived this game. Opponent's on 17, and I just need to somehow hit them back pretty hard. Authority of the Consoles makes Goblins versus Mono White Life gain a really hard matchup. Um, Gem Palm Incinerator would be much better in my hand. Um, and I don't have enough for Muxus. That's a bummer. Two Wily Goblins gives it to me next turn, but I'm dead. Gem Palm Incinerator can be played for three mana. But I think we just don't have it here. Um, we can just write that up to being a tough matchup, though. Um, I'll drop one of these out, and then there's the Hobgoblin Bandit Lord that I was hoping for. And uh, Conspicuous Snoop can hit for actually a good bit here. So... I'm going to, in response to the Voice of the Blessed trigger, make a bunch of these things. And then I will kill off Voice of the Blessed. Gives me another turn. <clears throat> All of my opponent's stuff gets bigger. Okay. And opponent is just two life gain away from uh, being able to kill me. I can block the Eyeless Ilkor, but nothing else. <coughs> do they have it? They do indeed have it. They'll gain six life and have enough to kill me. Bummer. We were actually not too far away from stabilizing there. Um, just needed a couple more turns where I could use the Hobgoblin Bandit Lord to uh, start bopping things. Okay, so we are 1 and 2 after 3 rounds. Let us hope for a good matchup here. Let's do it. Okay, we're in round 4 with ra with uh, mono red goblins. And this hand has a pretty good curve. I'm happy keeping this. I will most likely be trying to ramp out a Cranko this turn, or not a Cranko, a Muxus, so I'll be playing Wily Goblin on two over Conspicuous Snoop. Um, I will turn on the phases. No, oh, I'll try to, but magic won't let me. Okay. Uh, so I'll have to enable full control if I want to do any funky stuff in response to what my opponent does. We got green out of them. Tenacious Pup, so there is a little bit of life gain here, and 
Interesting. So it looks like they're on some sort of creature build. I will get my Wily Goblin out this turn, and I do rip the third land. Um, I can play a Muxus on turn four, even if I don't draw the land. So I need to hope for no removal for my Treasure Token and Skirk Prospector. Opponent on green-white, at least. They're going to fight. Okay, I will... Uh, Proliferate happens first, so I'm going to just sack my goblin. It's not really going to matter at all. Uh, the spell won't fizzle. Um, yeah, bummer. Okay, so now the question is, do I go Matron, which will give me Muxus, but with only four mana on board, or... I can just uh, start pushing with Hobgoblin Bandit Lord, or I can Conspicuous Snoop. I will uh, play Conspicuous Snoop with the plan of playing Bandit Lord next turn. Um, now I know that I have a War Chief, which is good. Um, I could just start going for value now, which I think I'll do. Um, since I know I'm a bit away from the Muxus, I'm going to try to see if there's a world where I find my... Uh, if there's a world where I find another Skirk Prospector off the top. That's kind of the only easy way to get this thing. Um, okay, so the next creature spell, Pump's Pelt Collector. Um, it's cool that this is next creature spell in general, not just your next one this turn. Interesting text on that card. And so this is going to be counters. Uh, they're going to just, when things die, put them onto the Ozolith and then just try to make a big creature. So uh, in this matchup, I think I want to prioritize having Hobgoblin Bandit Lord, which can, um, it, it can, in response to the combat trigger, kill something that is going to get all the counters. I imagine that their deck plays a lot of small things, so this seems like a good strategy. Now, if they want to trade... Their Pelt Collector somehow. I could Hobgoblin Pump Snoop. And then just attack in with those. I think I'll do that. If they want to kill something, it's whatever. They'll trade. Yeah, the Pelt Collector being traded seems fine. Vigilance and Trample is going to be annoying. Um, and then it was given Vigilance from, okay, from the Pup. Uh, this deck does not have any ways to remove the Ozolith. So this is going to be a question of, can I kill them before they kill me? There is the 1-1 one, one counter doubler in Branching Evolution. And I will get my Mountain in here. I will Matron either for Skirk Prospector or for Muxus. A Matron plus War Chief is also a cool thing that I could do. Oh, I can't actually quite do that. Um, I will just get in here then, saving the Bandit Lord in case I in case they want to make a double block, then I can finish off their other creature. Them killing Goblin War Chief is a pretty good move, but if they do so, they're gonna have no creatures. Okay, so they just decide to trade there. That kind of makes sense. They go to four. Their Tenacious Pup is going to get some counters on it. And now we got to see how big they can make it. They are dead next turn unless they produce another blocker. Uh, Karn's Bastion being one. Or Karn's Bastion not counting as a creature, but being a good card that they could draw. They will probably beat us in the long game here, though. <clears throat> They'll attack in for three. I don't care to block it. And now unless their other card is a board wipe or creature, then I think I have it. Here is a five mana. I will uh, Goblin Matron in first to use my Goblin War Chief discount. Plus, I get to shuffle for something to hit off of Conspicuous Snoop. Conspicuous Snoop, rather. 
Um, and now I've got uh, lethal damage on board. Let's attack. Um, they can actually have the exile all creatures uh, card while attacking creatures. So I will save my war chief and just go in with three creatures. In fact, I will. Uh, yeah, getting rid of conspicuous snoop is okay. I'll attack in with three C if they have either a flash threat or something that can exile. This could be the destroy target tapped creature card. If that is, it's fine. Okay, so it's an Agonjo. Alright. So, I'm punished for not attacking all the way in and playing around Settle the Wreckage, but that's okay. They'll block Conspicuous Snoop, and I'm going to finish it off. That's a fine trade for me. Now they don't have any creatures and they just need to top deck something. We're looking fine. I can also just cast Muxus next turn for fun. Okay. Hopeful Initiate does not kill anything that is on my board. Alright. Opponents just gotta pass it back. Alright. Here's a mountain in Muxus. Let's just go for the moon. Gem Palm and a Hobgoblin Mandalord. Not too bad. Anyway, that is something like 25 damage on the board. We will hit in and take game four. So after four rounds, we are two and two. Three more to go. Let's see if we can end with a positive record. All right, here we are in round five. This hand has a War Chief to discount and then a Cranko as kind of what the game plan is. Hobgoblin Bandit Lord times two is cool. I think I'm okay with this. Here is Mountain. Here is your turn. Let's go. Okay, seems like elves to me. Um, I cannot warrant cycling this. Uh, I'll need to wait till next turn where I'll be playing War Chief. Should not get removed. Uh, I can. Yeah, so I need to play War Chief. I'm already looking down a lot of damage. This is going to be tough. Uh, here's War Chief. Then I think next turn I am Gem Palm Incinerating to kill Clan Caller. Whoa, do not attack. What you doing there? Uh, I take five this turn, potentially seven if they have another thing to pump with. Okay, there's a Marwin. Um, Would have liked to kill that, but that's not an option. I will take three. I've got four mana now. Cranko starts to do stuff for me. Bandit Lords do as well. If I were to play Bandit Lord, Bandit Lord, that's great because it pumps all my things. Then Cranko next turn just takes me to the moon. Okay. Seems fine. I also have Gem Palm Incinerator to kill something. Now, I've got to look at what my opponent is on. There is the Mana Producer alongside Marwin, so they are going to be able to potentially hoof me next turn. If they're just not going to kill me this turn. Okay, it just got real. I am going to absolutely take 10. And let's see what we can do. I can Goblin Matron in for a Snoop, not a Snoop, a um, Prospector. Um, how does my turn look if I do that? So... Matron gets Prospector, that's three total mana to get both of those out onto the battlefield. I can sack, I might be one mana short of this play actually. Hmm, I might have to get rid of a Bandit Lord, which would suck. Yeah, I think I need to go get a Prospector though. Take action, let me get a Prospector please. They're over here. Yeah, so now I am in a tough position of needing to get rid of something. 
I'm gonna have to prospector killing a bandit lord, which is terrible. Get rid of this as well. Now I can cast Cranko. Cranko can make a bunch of things. I've got four mana to work with here. I can cycle for a incinerator to kill something. Um, I could also just snoop once. See if I have anything useful on the top of my library. A Wily Goblin is not useful, but can be sacked to Skirk Prospector, so it's fine. It's actually mana neutral. And now I just need to try to deal enough damage to my opponent. Um, Gem Palm now needs to be cycled, sacking Wily Goblin. Not okay. Um, so I have five damage to deal to something. I don't know if it needs to be to my opponent or to something. I'll kill Archdruid to put them off mana. Okay. Uh, this needs to kill Cranko, I guess, since Cranko can't be untapped this turn. Snoop, unfortunately, just doesn't do it. That's so unfortunate. I can Bandit Lord deal 10 to them. Um, I could take them off of a Marwin. They still kill me. Yeah, 10 to the opponent is what I gotta do. Sacking Snoop, I suppose. So we just about got there. If we had enough mana to keep the other uh, Bandit Lord, we would have been able to do it. But unfortunately, that's not going to do it for us. Kind of a heartbreaker there, we were really close. Uh, elves had a very good start, so I'm not really mad for losing that. At the end of the day, it's a race against Agridex and we just barely lost. Okay, that is round five complete and now we go into round six, here we go. All right, time for round six. Matron, Matron, Muxus. Matron can find a lot of different things. It could find Wily Goblin, it could find Prospector. I'll try this hand. This is going to be 100% on the plan of casting Muxus. Opponent showing some lightning bolt sleeves. Here's a mountain. Okay. Some sort of aggro deck. I can be on Matron. Purpose. Yeah, so this is just almost red deck wins. Fireblade Charger is a little different. Um, three mana, Matron can find Prospector. Then I can cast Wily Goblin next turn. And I'll almost be there. Seems good. The fact that I am going for a 1 1 is not the best thing in the world, but oh well. Uh, take action. Here is, where is he, Skirk Prospector. Next turn I can play that, I'll have four, five mana available, six mana available, just barely. So, looks like Muxus next turn, we'll have to hope for a good hit. I think against Mono Red I want to get out this early, especially if they attack this turn. And don't kill Goblin Matron. I would not expect them to try to kill it. Okay, so they'll put me off of a mana here. I can just go in for another one, get a second Wily Goblin. Yeah, Charger gets a bit bigger. Um, okay, so here's a mountain. We got Bandit Lord, Goblin, Goblin. Um, I can do Matron Skirk Prospector finding the cost reducing Goblin. Take action. Goblin Warchief. Here's Skirk Prospector. I'm kind of dangling this out if they have a removal spell. But we're going to play that game, I think. Uh, at the end of the day, I am just one mana away from playing a Muxus next turn, so actually I can just do it keeping up Skirk Prospector. I'll take my two. There is a giant. 
And okay, I have enough for a Muxus. Here we go. Sacking Goblin Matron. Hitting a War Chief here is great. Even if we don't, hopefully this just gives us a board. Skirk, Skirk, Bandit Lord, Bandit Lord. I am not super excited about sacking my board to play a War Chief, so I will just go in with the Skirk Prospector. They can trade with Crusher if they want. We'll take three, makes sense. End my turn. Bandit Lord, Bandit Lord is good. <clears throat> okay. Whatever they gain control of, I am sacrificing. Thank you, sir. Uh, I can sack another thing to kill Crusher. Um, let me hold full control here. Um, before they pass, I will sack my half goblin. I'll incinerate. Um, here's my auto pay. And I'll kill Crusher, take two damage off of that. Oh, this is not a uh, not a thing that it is targeted for. No, oh, not a spell, it's an ability. Cool. Okay, it's not a good attack for them. I have six mana now. I can play War Chief. Bandit Lord. Uh, is it worth it to sack for Goblin? Not really. I can kill... It doesn't truly matter. Okay. Now I will just attack it fully. All right. We're getting close. Just need to hold on a little more. I'll pass through my turn. Five damage. Uh, my stuff getting goaded is completely fine. Okay, so now they're just trying to deploy blockers. They can animate Faceless Haven. But as far as I'm aware, there's no shenanigans they can pull there. Alright, an opponent sees the writing. That is 3 and 2. Oh no, 4 and 2 after round 6. I forget if we won round 5 or not. Anyway, here we go on to the last round. Let's finish out with a win. Okay, I checked my recording in between games, and we are 3-3 three and three after 6 games. Here is where we go positive or go negative. I like the curve in this hand. Skirk Prospector into Wily Goblin is good. Uh, and we have the way to find a uh, Muxus. This is as good of a hand as we'll get. Skirk Prospector comes in. Here we go. Into Wily Goblin on turn 2. We do get the third land drop, which I'm extremely happy about. Here is Wily Goblin. Uh, I think I just fire off a Goblin Matron on Pranko. It's another Authority of the Consoles deck, which is not my favorite thing to see. I could start a pressure, applying pressure with Bandit Lord in that case. How you beat one of these decks is making sure that you don't just have a bunch of 1-1s. One now we gotta see if they deploy a threat or if we get board wiped on turn 4. Um, I have to imagine that this is a uh, board wipe, so maybe I don't want to extend so much. I will just go ahead, right back in there. Um, then I can... Search for a Muxus, which would totally just still make it okay if they board wipe. I will hold off. Let's end turn. They're on a two turn clock, they gotta clear me out. And my next turn I can start to do stuff. I'm at five mana now. Here we go. Either they're missing the white mana for the board wipe, or they have a counter spell, which I just don't need to do anything to aggravate. Okay. Do we just have the attack? Wow. Ended it off with the non-game to end all non-games. We effectively dodged the authority of the consoles and a bunch of counterspells. 
Looking at my opponent's hand, they indeed had two Doom Scars and were just missing out on the mana to cast them. It was a good read, but if they had wiped me, I would have been on five mana, would have been able to get either a Cranko out or a Goblin Matron, and then follow them up with a Bandit Lord in order to start applying the same two mana, or the, uh, the non-one power toughness creatures. Anyway, that is the end of our seven games with Mono Red Goblins. I think that the Rakdos version of this deck is slightly better, and I do enjoy playing it more. When you run into these Authority of the Consoles decks with Rakdos Goblins, you actually have a lot more power in order to kill your opponent, with things like Sling Gang Lieutenant being able to drain them out at instant speed, and Hobgoblin Bandit Lord being able to do the same sort of thing in response to all the Authority of the Consoles triggers. With that being said, Mono Red is the original home for Goblins, and it was what made them so popular. So it's fun to play this deck every once in a while and see how it holds up. Thanks for sticking with me through this video. If you liked it, please give me a like. I'm trying to build the channel a bit. All of that stuff helps with the YouTube algorithm. Anyway, shilling out of the way. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.